Hey, when was the last time you made a wish that actually came true? Have you ever needed a friend so bad you just rubbed one out? Oh, nope, yeah, I, I heard it as soon as I said it. Anyway, congratulations! You might be a genie warlock. But what is a genie warlock? Well, close your eyes, think real hard, and let's make a little magic. <laughs> So everyone knows about genies, right? If you seem lost or have no clue what I'm talking about, there's plenty of great movies that can- No! Not that one. That one doesn't exist. But in short, genies are powerful, magical beings often portrayed as being trapped inside of an object. This could be a jar or a lamp or that weird bottle your dad keeps above the fridge for when you've been especially annoying. And a genie is best known for granting wishes. However, because a genie isn't usually keen on the notion of being trapped and enslaved inside of a can of beans, their wishes may either be overly literal or purposefully twisted to mess with you. So, that's genies. But how does the D&D version compare? Well, it's pretty close, actually. Just take all of that and add some avatar rules and we're good. But unlike an ancient demon or a possessed Glock, your patron is not only an all-powerful cosmic being, but also makes a game out of warping your deepest desires. Sounds like a good deal, right? Damn good deal. But first, have you ever made a mistake so big you'd desperately like to go back and change it? Have you ever wondered what happens when the flow of time hits a brick wall? Well, if you have, The Chronomancer's Guide to the Future Part 2 has you covered. The sequel to The Chronomancer's Guide to the Future has you embark on an expedition through eras, correcting past mistakes. Get it? Pa past mistake. <clears throat> At some point in history, the world jacked itself up and you, a timekeeper, are just the one to fix it. This 5e supplement is compatible with any game and setting, adding new time travel rules and mechanics, and includes tools and tables for both DMs and players. Build your party, choose your department, and help reweave the universe for the mysterious goddess known only as the Seamstress. Part 1 is of course already out, but the Kickstarter for Part 2 is coming very soon. Or if you're from the future, maybe it's been out for a while. But you can follow this link below to click the Notify Me on Launch button to be the first to join the Time Wars. And a big thanks to the folks behind Chronomancers for sponsoring the show. Now, back to the video. So, it's up to you to decide how your character stumbled across your genie in the first place and what kind. Genies come in four flavors, spicy, breezy, grainy, and wet, and these particular ones are considered noble genies. Being more powerful than their lesser counterparts, a noble genie can grant you much more than just wishes, but their patronage comes at a price. You see, as for D&D lore, genies kinda like collecting... Uh, people? I guess being immortal gets boring, so collecting servants to manipulate probably passes the time. Sometimes, as in your case, servitude is transactional, and other times it's... not. But much like public school in the South, we're just gonna gloss over that a little bit. Mostly so YouTube doesn't clap me. Luckily, our genie likes us enough to give us a little packed magic. This gives you access to spellcasting and eldritch blast, but also certain specific spells added to your list unique to your genie. So if you picked the Afridi, your spells will be Fire Theme, the Gen Win, the Dao Earth, and the Merid is a fish. Oh, uh, it's a cart. But you also get a genie's vessel. Phenomenal cosmic power! This vessel can be really anything with a lid and acts like a portable safe room for you to hang out in, letting you kind of just poke a ball yourself in and out of the vessel once a day. The inside is nice too, being a 20 foot radius circular room, so if my math is right, that's about 1250 square feet, making it about as big as your standard apartment. You can stay in the vessel a number of hours equal to twice your proficiency bonus, giving you plenty of time to get a short rest, but as we level up, this becomes long enough to take a full night's sleep. It also can act like a bag of holding, letting you leave objects you've carried into the vessel there as long as the vessel remains intact. And as a part of the vessel, you also get Genie's Wrath, adding damage to any attack that has an attack roll once during each of your turns. While using a sword is fun and all, this can also be used with your Eldritch Blast to really hammer the damage home. The extra damage is equal to your proficiency bonus and takes on the type from your genie. So while fire and cold damage are cool, picking the Dao basically means you're hucking rocks at people, which 
I think is pretty funny. Second level is here and we get Eldritch Invocations. Invocations are like buffs or spells, but mostly they're just little treats from your patron to keep you coming back for more magic. These first two aren't the most important, but I love Mask of Many Faces, allowing you to cast Disguise Self at will, and Agonizing Blast, letting you add your Charisma modifier to your Eldritch Blast attacks. These will depend mostly on your personal playstyle, but in my mind your high charisma makes you perfect for impersonating NPCs to sow some chaos, and then blasting your way out if you get into trouble. Third level already? Well, since we were such a good little vassal, our genie has enhanced our magic with a Pact Boon. There are a few great options here, but I think flavor and utility-wise, the Pact of the Chain is actually the best for you. You immediately learn the spell Find Familiar that you can cast as a ritual, but you also get some added creatures to the familiar list. Now instead of a rat or an octopus, you can choose a quasit, a pseudo-dragon, a sprite, or an imp. And as much as I wish I could tell you to take the cute little cat-sized dragon, the imp is really the best choice. This ugly little guy has great stats, a low-grade polymorph, invisibility, and magic resistance for advantage on spells and magical effects. And on top of that, it's possible it can share that magical resistance with you using the variant familiar stat block. However, this is apparently hotly debated and not what this video is about, but if you're in my game, and you choose the imp, you can do this, 100%. Your familiar, no matter what form it takes, can also use its reaction to attack as long as you forego one of your attacks to let it do so. Flavor-wise, I like the idea that your genie lets you borrow one of its trapped creatures to better fulfill whatever weird stuff the genie is up to, and I think that it works better for the story than the other packed boons. But I just want that little dragon so bad. Look how cute he is. <coughs> Fifth level lets us take another invocation, and since we just got our familiar, why not take Investment of the Chainmaster? Now your familiar can take a flying or swimming speed, even if it doesn't have wings or flippers, can take the attack action on its turn instead of burning its reaction, its weapons are considered magical, it can use your spell DC when forcing another creature to make a save, and you can spend your reaction to give it resistance against damage if it gets hit. Woo! All around this is a pretty sick set of buffs that really make your familiar a companion to the party instead of just a spy or a scout, all of which you can still do. Sixth level is here, and this is the good good. Your pa I mean patron, loves you so much they've decided to grant you an elemental gift. But instead of a new purse or a nice car, they gave you permanent resistance to their associated damage type. But what if you could tank a dragon's fire breath while flying? Well now you can because you also get a 30 foot flying speed you can activate as a bonus action a number of times a day equal to your proficiency bonus. A free flying speed is great, but the downside is your feet disappear and are replaced by that weird Tasmanian devil tornado genies get from the cartoons. At least in my game. Hey, I'm giving you the cool variant imp, okay? You can handle a little butt tornado. Skipping ahead to 7th and 9th level, you get another invocation each. In either order, I like Voice of the Chainmaster and Repelling Blast. Voice of the Chainmaster is another buff to your familiar, allowing you to perceive through its senses as long as you're on the same plane, and even if the creature doesn't have a mouth, you can talk through it as if it did. There are a lot of uses for this, but my first thought is using it as a one-way octopus walkie-talkie for when the party has to convince Atlanteans to sign a peace treaty. Anyway, Repelling Blast is much simpler, letting you choose to push a creature 10 feet away from you when you hit them with an Eldritch Blast. Best part is there's no save and no size limit, letting you knock giants off of cliffs or dragons back down to the ground. And because this works per Eldritch Blast, you can double that pushback as long as you keep hitting. By level 17, if you're a sharpshooter, you can push somebody 40 feet backwards with a cantrip. That's pretty damn strong. 10th level is where our little lamp gets a much needed buff. Now we can let our friends join us in our genie's vessel to get in on the fun. I call it a party in a bottle. Everyone who hangs out in the bottle for 10 minutes gains the benefits of a short rest, and if they spend hit die, they can add your proficiency dice to their HP. But if someone is being a party pooper, you can also just eject them as a bonus action. The obvious buffs here are fantastic, being able to get in a short rest in 10 minutes, letting you regain your warlock slots, but there is also a ton of devious stuff you can do with this. Combining your mask of many faces with the suggestion spell could help you lure an unsuspecting enemy into your bottle while your familiar flies a few hours over the ocean and just... 11th level gets us a Mystic Arcanum! Which is a really fancy way of saying spells. 
I really haven't gone over many spells in this breakdown, mostly because I think the variation of different genies make the playstyles different enough that it would take all day for me to break down every spell for every build. However, this level gets us access to Investiture of Flame, Ice, Stone, or Wind, and I honestly think these are just too fitting to pass up. Flavor-wise, these are obvious choices, but they're also just good spells giving you elemental buffs to wreck during battle. Plus, I mean, wouldn't it make your sugar genie just so happy to see you repping their colors out there in the midst of battle? I mean, they might be so happy they'd give us a, another invocation. Well, hey, would you looky there? 12th level gets us another invocation. And while your choices here are pretty huge, I'm kind of digging ghostly gaze. Basically, you can activate Batman Vision as an action to see through solid objects to a range of 30 feet as long as you're concentrating for a minute. The obvious uses here are infiltration or checking luggage at the TSA, but you can combine this ability with your familiar to send in your invisible imp scout and use your gaze to look for enemies, treasure, or secret passages. 13th level gets us a 7th level Mystic Arcanum like Force Cage or Plane Shift, but I'm not talking about spells you can't make me, because 14th level gets us Limited Wish. Finally, we've worked hard enough for our genie to give us a little bit of that sweet wish magic with a few stipulations. Basically, you can whisper into your magic pickle jar and ask your genie to cast any spell from any list of 6th level or lower. I mean, bruh. The options here are endless, from simple stuff like Wall of Force to making the dragon do the nay-nay. This is an incredible buff with one drawback. Unfortunately, the recharge time on this ability is 1d4 days, making it less reliable for every encounter, so just be cautious when you use this ability as you'd much rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. 15th level gets us 8th level spells, stop it, I'm not doing it, because we already have another invocation with the Chains of Kasiri. This allows you to cast Hold Monster at will, as long as the creatures targeted are Celestial Fiends or Elementals. If they pass the save, you can't keep spamming them with it, but if you ever try visiting your patron in their home plane, this will save your bacon against the armies of elementals wanting to eat you? Do hurricanes eat things? I don't know, but they don't like you. 17th level gets us 9th level spells, and fine, I'll talk about spells. And obviously the most fitting choice is Wish. Your patron is literally a genie, I mean what else would you go with? Wish is every 8th level spell and lower combined as well as a bunch of other effects, but be careful you don't push your patron too much. You could actually lock yourself out of a 9th level spell if you roll poorly. But we're late game, have fun. Wish for enough money to crash the global economy or be 5 centimeters taller, who cares? 18th level gets us our final Eldritch Invocation, but we kinda did it. All the ones we grabbed are pretty great and we don't really need more, but with Shroud of Shadow for infinite invisibility or Witch Sight to see through illusion and transmutation magic, or Grasp of Hadar to pull a creature closer instead of pushing them away, you kinda can't go wrong. Finally, at level 20, we become an Eldritch Master, letting you hang out for one minute whispering sweet nothings to your magic thermos and recover all your warlock slots at once. As far as level 20 capstones goes, this is pretty fantastic. And all it took was your everlasting soul. But hey, you do have Wish. Does that mean we can wish ourselves free of the genie's power and still keep all the magic? Well, anyway, does the genie warlock fulfill our grandest desires? Absolutely. This subclass is what I imagine the warlock should have been the entire time. While the Hexblade feels like a more martial version, this plays more like a caster blaster who specializes in locking down opponent positions. The Warlock itself doesn't get that many spells to begin with, so being able to enhance your other abilities enough to feel useful and unique is not something to take lightly. On top of that, the creative combinations between your vessel and familiar can result in some devastating strategies in and out of combat. Flavor-wise, this one also makes the most sense to me. I mean, wouldn't you rather take an offer from this guy over this terrifying mess? But if you're okay with an extremely mobile home, don't mind kissing your patron's lack of ass, and have an interesting technique when it comes to making new friends, guess what? You might be a genie warlock. Hey guys, big thanks for making it this far and watching the video. If you like this one, make sure to share it, especially if you know somebody who's playing this subclass. More subs are coming up on the poll very soon, so check that out, and until next time, have a good one, and I'll see you soon.